So segregation model diagnostics is basically we are talking about the model accuracy um, checking and um, the, the fitting of linear regression. So it's like that you, we, let's say we fitted the linear regression model, uh, we estimate the parameter. And so now we want to see that how our model is good, how good it is, is our model. So the relation between the study variable and explanatory variables um, is linear, at least with approximately would say that they are linear. The error term has zero mean, uh, the expected value of error is um, zero, and it has a constant variance uh, as i equal to i times sigma two, or you can say the diagonal, main diagonal of your uh, variance covariance matrix. The errors are uncorrelated and the errors are normally distributed. So what are the diagnostic methods to check the variation of regression assumption? <coughs> we need to, when we make these assumptions, the, I'm sorry, the violation of the regression assumption, the validity of these assumptions, we need them for the result to be the meaningful. If the assumptions are violated, the result can be incorrect or may have serious consequences, right? Um, basically, we would use different test statistics. Um, so, so, so such underlying assumptions have to be verified before attempting to regression modeling. Such information is not uh, available from the summary statistics such as T statistic, FS statistic, or coefficient of determination. Um, there's several, so it's like that we want to use the different test statistics, but at the same time, these test statistics, it's like that you need to have your ANOVA table, right? So it's like that you need to compare it like your um, F observed from the F from the table. So we need something before going to that steps. And there are several diagnostic methods to check, to check the violation of regression assumptions. And they are based on the model residuals with the help of various types of the graphics. Um, we have, for the methods, for the checking of linear regression relationship to have the linear regression method between a study and explanatory variable. Explanatory variables are like x, the x1, x2, x3. Um, case of one regressor, like you would have one explanatory variable, you would have just simple linear regression that we had. Case of more than one regressor. So we have these two um, different categories. And these are the, for the residual analysis, these are four different types of the residuals that we would have, and we are gonna like, like a standardized residuals or a studentized residual, press residual or a student. So we are gonna uh, look at them quickly. Then we have one, so I said that we have two category, right? categories, one regressor and more than one regressor, like um, simple linear regression and multiple linear, for example, regression. So if there is only one explanatory variable in the model, then it's easy to check the existence of the linear relation between X and Y by a scatter diagram of the available data. So you can see it here. Um, and then you can just, you can say that by like, if they have the linear relation to each other or not, by looking at the, um, the like a scatter plot. And then for case of more than one regressor, to check the assumption of linearity between the study variable and the regressors, the scatter plot matrix of the data, we can use it. Um, the scatter plot matrix is, a, but it's gonna be two dimensional array of two dimension plots, right? Because we have more than one X, like where you have Y is equal to beta null plus beta one X plus beta two X two. So it's more than one independent variable. Um, so you would have like two dimensional array of the two dimension plots where each form contains a scatter diagram except for the um, diagonal. So it's like this, you have the y versus x1, uh, y versus x2, 
y versus xk, like whatever number of takes that you have. And um, each plot sheds some lights on the um, relationship between a pair of variables. It gives more information than the correlation coefficient uh, between each pair, each pair of the variable because it gives a sense of linearity or non-linearity of the relationship and some awareness of how the individual data points are uh, arranged over the region. Another option um, for the case of more than one um, regressor is that present the scatter plot in the upper triangle part of the plot matrix and then mention the corresponding correlation coefficient in the lower triangle part of the matrix. For example, look at here, um, suppose that there are only two experimental variables of the like beta one, beta two, and then, but, so we would have beta one, beta two for X one and X two. Uh, and then the scatter plot matrix would look like like this. So you would have your, you have Y, X1 and X2, right? And then you have, you, ha you draw the scatter plot here and just consider like a symmetric uh, parts of it. You would write down the um, correlation coefficient for it. Like for example, here it's gonna be for this, this one minus 0.7, it's going to be the correlation um, coefficient for this one, and 0 0.8 is going to be correlation coefficient for this one. And um, so we can, you know, this is one way of um, writing down, like having them and presenting them in the scatter plot when we have more than one um, regressor or explanatory variable. But um, it is to be kept in mind that. Um, we got only the information on pairs of variable through the scatter plot, where the assumption of linearity is between y and jointly with x1, x2, and xk. So if some of the um, regressors are themselves um, interrelated, then this scatter theorem can be misleading because it's separating. It doesn't give us the whole picture just try to give me like what's happening between y and x1 or what's happening between y and x2. It doesn't tell me what's happening between y at the same time with x1 and x2. Some other method of sorting out the relationship between several experimental variables and a study variable are used. Um, and that's residual analysis. So the residual is defined as the different